So just uh, before we start, just quick background on me. Yeah. Um, but what I'm doing is studying success, not in a way that I know how to become successful, more in a way of that I'm learning and putting it into practice in my journey, um, as well as interviewing different people that know about success like yourself to help me with that information because it's so much better when people hear from other people that have been successful instead of me just, you know, chapping over here and talking about success. <laughs> right, right. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. All right, cool. So um, we can get this started. Okay. I'm just going to go off of the questions that my team has set up, uh, filled with my sisters and stuff. So Nice. Take it from there. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. So, Dan, thank you so much for this interview. I uh, really appreciate it. He is all the way in California. I'm here in New York, and we're making this happen on Skype. <laughs> the magic of the internet, right? That's it. <laughs> all right, Dan. So, just before we get into the real serious questions, um, what's your story and kind of like where you're coming from? What's your your whole idea with what you're doing with the, you know to those people that don't know you? You mean as far? I guess as far as my channel and who I am in general. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm an individual that's got a really strong spiritual background. I was brought up Catholic originally, if it matters, but sort of drifted into this spiritual, met some interesting people, like channeling all sorts of crazy stuff, right? And through a lot of this, I learned that the power of our thoughts, the power of words, the power of our actions are what actually create our worlds. So I think this is where our kind of crossover comes in is really – any success story always has someone that's talking about they never gave up. They always looked at adversity and figured there had to be a way, right? So it's that kind of thing where I sort of learned in real life that our actions, our beliefs, what we decide we're going to do is what, you know, really opens that pathway up for us. And found right. this law of attraction stuff kind of after, which is really kind of one of the key focuses on my channel. Uh, and it's just, again, it gets into how we can kind of try to manifest things intentionally within our lives based off of our thoughts and our words and our deeds and just some great techniques. And, right. you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a good, it's a great, a uh, great way for us to learn to control our thoughts. And that's probably the biggest uh, reason I do it. Got it. So I hear in your channel, you talk a, a lot about. You broke up a little bit there. If you can repeat the question, that'd be great. Uh, I want to be honest. You got me? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're back. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. So, uh, I know in your channel you talk a lot about manifesting and in and, and every video, video I always hear that. But I want to be honest. I don't really understand that word. Okay. And okay. for those that don't understand that as well, um, I always hit on like the topics you hit, like gratitude. I understand that, but manifesting, can you kind of clear that up, at least for me? Yeah, sure. And for whoever. Mm -hmm. Manifesting essentially is just a, a word that means creating, uh, creating something intentionally. Uh, so that's really what it means, is something to come from maybe a thought form, a thought, like, and then right. forming into reality. That process, that's manifestation, is really what they're referring to when they say that. And, Again, that happens with success, maybe trying to find a job or whatever. It's that it starts as a thought and then eventually becomes reality. So. Got it, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Right. So my team and I have formed a few questions. Um, and they just kind of want to get to know you a little bit, a uh, little fun facts. And what are your five or where do you see yourself in five years? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and, and kind of on that same line, I do uh, believe that it's good to have uh, like a five-year plan for sure. I've got a, an 18-month plan, a five-year plan, and then kind of a 10-year plan. The five-year plan, I actually see myself probably – I see myself doing seminars. Uh, I'm involved okay. in voiceover work, so I do see myself uh, having been in a movie by that point. Um, and you know, even at my dream, it's why I got, I used to be in radio. So it was why I got into all this back when I was younger was my dream was to be in a Disney movie. Now, granted, they didn't have <laughs> Pixar and all that stuff, but even if I'm a spoon that walks through and just say, I like coleslaw, you know, if that was my, my line in the movie, I would be totally cool with that. But again, right, right. uh, within five years, I'll probably have pulled that off. I see my YouTube, uh, really blossoming. Uh, I've just talked to a few people that, as the numbers progress, you start to get a little different kick from YouTube's uh, analytics engine and stuff. It starts to actually right. help you out. Um, so 
Uh, I see that growing for sure. And I see myself really reducing my primary income uh, through my normal job, if you will, uh, and start to have that come in through other channels and, and coaching or teaching and maybe writing. That was something someone just brought up recently, right. too. So, yeah, that's kind of where I see myself in five years. All right. So, everybody, you guys watching over here, over here on Skype, um, Dan is – okay, so I, I spoke to Dan, I think, maybe – a month and a half ago, yeah, right? right. Yeah, sure. Something like that. His channel, I think, had like 610, something like that. 640, I can't remember. But he's at 718, I think it was, the last uh, number I saw. I, yeah, I'm up yeah. about 108 <laughs> overall a month, 110 a month is yeah. what I've been averaging for a little while. So it's been pretty Okay, good. so... And that's up so my downs, po- by the way. Go ahead. Right, exactly. My point is, okay, guys... Um, he has a lot of influence, guys. What, what he's talking about, I want you guys to see that it's really important. And I'm very humbled and lucky that, you know, you accepted this interview. You accepted uh, to talk to me for a little bit. Now, I got a little... Uh... Hey, Valerie. Good morning. Hi. Uh, hi, Valerie. I have Dan here on Skype, just interviewing him. You want to say hi? <laughs> How are you? How are you, Valerie? He said, how are you? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Good. I'll Very good. You guys continue. Sorry. All right. No, don't worry. I'll call <laughs> you back. <laughs> cool. That's one of my... She asked uh, to send me a few questions as well. Oh, cool. All right, cool. So let's get into the, the whole idea behind this video, you know. Yeah, yeah. Curious. Success, you know, dealing with success with 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, clearing their minds on... Especially me as well. Oh, I have to be successful in two years, you know. That I have to be a millionaire. I remember I used to think like that too. But, you know, reading the, the books and reading, watching videos and different things like that, I've seen that people, it, it's not like that, that. It's more of a process. It's very important in the process. So um, the first question that I want to ask you on, on this is many young people in their 20s and 30s, uh, look for a quick process or a quick get rich quick thing. Uh, can you please explain why it's better to not rush the process? Yeah, well, there's a few things I guess that come to mind uh, right off the bat. So one good example, and I, I think uh, your audience predominantly is male, right? Uh, at least when yeah. we talked about it. So from the standpoint of that, like all of us, when we kind of want to get a little more ripped, maybe get our, our six-pack abs back, right? Is this one of those things where I'm going to do it in two weeks or forget it, I'm never going to try? Or is it more right. of a process? Is it more something that we do repetitively? Like, I'm going to, this is a lifestyle now, right? I'm going to eat a little better. I'm going to start controlling what I do. I'm going to get to the gym on a regular basis. It's creating life patterns. So one, if it happens quickly, that doesn't really build and properly create itself. I forget the, it depends on, on what you're trying to create a habit for, but I think some people say it's 40 some odd days or whatever, but you know, after a, a long enough period of time, something becomes habitual and you start to do it just without even trying anymore. It's more right. of an autopilot. So I think that's a huge um, aspect that comes when you rush things, you don't per se get that. And you're looking for that dopamine kick way too quickly. And right. if you don't keep getting that in business, you tend to get bored and fizzle out. So again, it's a, the endurance runner as well. Uh, but I also think on top of that, when it comes to manifesting money, for example, many of us aren't really capable of thinking, what would I do truly? If I was making a million dollars a year, say right now, I'm just making 100000 or 50000 We'll make it even really kind of lower, right? And in New York, right. you're destitute. You're probably homeless at fifty grand, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, you're making fifty grand a year, and I want to make a million, right? A lot of us are like, ah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a million dollars in the next year and a half, and I've got it taped on my mirror, and I look at it every day, you know, and I flex in the muscles in the mirror, right? <laughs> you know how it's going to say, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. We're, so we're going we're gonna to have some outrageous uh, goal to hit a million dollars in 18 months, and I'm making 50K right now. I don't even know what would be different. Like if I was making a million dollars a year, I'd be living in a different environment. My house would be different. The type of car I'm driving would be completely right. different. The type of clothing that I'm wearing on a regular basis would be completely different. Most of us don't think that way. We haven't expanded ourselves to the point where that level of wealth can actually reside within us. We're not ready for it. And you talk right. all these stories where people win the lottery, right? 
And after about, what, two years, they take the big payout. Two years later, they're bankrupt. That's it. It's over. So most of us don't know. We don't have that level of responsibility yet in our lives to be able to do that. So that's kind of why it's better to look at it, I think, anyway, as more of a process and less of a got to happen now because you're going you're gonna to tire out. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do some silly things, and it will probably backfire at some point if you're going for the quick fix. Right. Let me just change my uh, rate, my frame rate over here, because it's telling me my Mac is not compatible. Uh -oh. um, it's okay. I put it at medium. Let's see how that works. It's like Bill, should be okay now. Bill, yeah. Ga Bill Gates is fighting with uh, whoever whoever's in <laughs> charge of I, I, uh, yeah. Apple right now. Oh boy. Anyway, okay. it's good now. Should be good now. Okay. Cool. All right. So, hey, the the second question sure. is many of us tend to blame others like our environments and people, our parents for our excuses to not succeed. You know, I, I couldn't do it because I, uh, I had a kid. I couldn't do it because I didn't have the money or whatever it is. Why is it important to take responsibility for this uh, in our lives? Uh, we, we are where we are because of us, right? I absolutely 100% agree with that. When I was in fourth grade, I believe it was, um, one of my buddies, uh, actually him and his brother, uh, they lived down the street and there's one thing their mom always said to me and it just sticks out to this day. I mean, it's fourth grade, man. And I'm, right. <laughs> I'm in my forties, <laughs> bud. Um, but she said, can't never could. And that always stuck with me. And that is truly the case that in, in, in most of our lives, if you come to the concept of being able to do anything, if you're throwing out all these reasons why you can't do it, then, then you're never you're... going to do it. So again, right. you look at any success story, anybody at all, and you will find that they always believe they could. They always push forward. They always persevere. They always believe there's a way. And when you get stuck focusing on all these environmental things, you're focused on the problems or your, here's another analogy for you. Hopefully this matters like in NASCAR racing, right? Just to use yeah. a very common term when there's a wreck in front of you, what they teach people to do is to find the hole and punch it. So you find the hole in front of you of cars and you punch it and you get through that. If you focus on any of the cars themselves, you will run right into them. So we go right. where we look. And that's one of those things is if you're looking off over at, you know, environmentals, my mom didn't hug me enough, whatever. If you're yeah. busy putting all the energy on that, you're not looking at what am I going to do? How am I going to be successful? How can I take my business up another notch? How can I increase my income level by another 25% over the next 18 months? And again, that's a more realistic goal, by the way, than hitting 50 grand right. to a million is let's pop it up 25%. That's significant. And you do that a few times. And now we're talking, you're maybe hitting the million dollar range. So right. it's a progression. It's a, it's a long term. But yeah, when you start allowing other things to slow you down or to allow you to blame it, I, I think you're missing the entire point of what this journey is really about. Right. I, I totally agree with that. I think it's so true because I remember when I was young and I had my dream was to become a professional baseball player. Nice. And some, sometimes I, I blame not having the right coach or not having the right training or whatever it was. But it really came down to me because I got distracted with girlfriends. I got distracted with arguments with that. Like, you're so young. Like, why you have to deal with that when you're focused on that? But, you know, it's my fault in the end. It's not my mom. It's not nobody else. I think it's my fault, you know? And that's the it's a hundred percent the way to look at it. I was the same way. I was a, a goalie in soccer, and I was pretty yeah. good. But I was also in drama, and I also had a girlfriend. And I and you're right. And it's like one of those things where the people that truly hit those big, big, significantly high numbers early on in their lives are the ones that right. are you know at like 15 years old got their first job and saved up money and had their first car when they were 18. You know what I mean? It was just they've right. always been a hard worker and they've always put in that time and they've always really just kept moving forward. And those are the people that generally, when you look back are the ones that are successful or the ones that hit their first million at 24 or the, you right. know, it, and that's, I think I agree with you. It's, it was our fault. We didn't push hard enough or we had some other distractions that maybe helped round us out as a person as well. I mean, cause right. some would question whether money's really everything, right? I mean, my dad used to joke it, it's money's not everything, but it comes way ahead of whatever's in second place. So, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, money is a really, really nice thing to have. And when you do have it, it's great. And you don't worry about certain things, no question about it, but it doesn't right. buy love. It doesn't buy, you know, happiness. So there's just those kinds of things to keep in mind. Right. 
So the third question, uh, I think is one of the most important ones, right? Being so young and maybe not having the experience of success, how can they learn or gain that experience through others? Now, before you hit on that, I just want to introduce my mentor in this conversation, oh, cool. uh, Jeff Howman. He's been mentoring me for the last two months. Uh, I met him at my job. I work at a hotel. He was staying there. He work, He does IBM or works for IBM nice. and has like startup companies and other things, coaches and stuff. And uh, it's just so cool. Look, it, it makes a lot of difference when you have somebody's experience, somebody's failures. Please, um, I know you, you definitely know about this. Hit on this. What do what do we want to hear? Let us know. Well, uh, you know, from the mentor side, for sure. Uh, and I kind of had that question, so we might be knocking two of these out with one stone here. But uh, <laughs> is a mentor important, I think, is the real key question from what you're asking me. And I'm going to say just to be short and simple, absolutely. Um, I think they say that you average, like your success level averages between the five closest people, you know, something like that. And so if the people you're hanging yeah, out yeah. with are demonstrating that which you're trying to do, then yes, you have a so much a stronger chance because by hanging out with them, you're seeing how it's done. You're hearing them talk. You're getting a feel for what does success sound like? What does success dress like? What does success drive up in? What do you... You know, on a total aside, by the way, Bill Gates used to show up at work in a Honda Accord, by the way, which I think is very funny. But, <laughs> and uh, and I forget the other guy's name, uh, super finance uh, finance guy, um, not Bill Gates. He's the one just below him that everyone always talks about. He's got huge money. Anyway, he drives right. the same car forever and ever and ever. He lived in the same house forever. So it's not necessarily about flashy, but regardless, when you spend time with a mentor, you get a much, much better taste and experience for how to do what it is that you're trying to do. If you're trying to lift weights, your mentor should be a buff person, right? I mean, if that's what you're trying to accomplish, go to someone that knows how to do it. Um, if you're trying to, um, we're still together, or did we lose each other? There we are, cool. If you're, yeah, we're, okay. yeah, and if you're <laughs> trying to, you know, understand something maybe within the church or whatever, go to the go to the person that spent, you know, all these years studying theology. If right. you're looking at someone that's successful monetarily, talk to them. Someone that's opened a lot of businesses, talk to somebody that's been an entrepreneur. It's it, exa right. it it's such an important uh, point and in steps I think for all of us in our journey. And certainly, the right. younger you do it, the better off you are because it gets you thinking that way that much quicker. Right. And I, I love what you said about the the money and the material things, because I watch a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. And he talks about he, he's very humble. Like he's very his his humility is um, to the max. Like he rents an apartment. He doesn't wear the, the bling bling, the watches, the name brands and all that crazy stuff. Right. And I don't want to say like I've seen it because I, you know, I don't know him in person, but um, it kind of seems true to me what he does and he just puts that money back into his business into others and it's so true that something that I'm looking forward to doing you know well, yeah and I think a lot of it too in all honesty uh, is the motivation behind why we're doing it and right. there are a lot of people that it's about the flash about the bling and you know if that is their thing if that's your thing then more power to you but I think again and it sounds like this is similar with you Carlos is there's levels there's more to life you know like you talked about the girls and stuff when you were younger i mean there's aspects having a family and all these things definitely kind of you can't just focus on making money making money making money when you maybe have a child at home that needs you know some attention or has got a baseball yeah. game that you want to go to so yep. it's a balance it's totally a balanced thing of course yeah uh, all right so let's get into the final question all right and again, thank you so much, Dan. Carlos, it's for been a pleasure. Meeting me and, and this conversation and for your time. Cause I know you're very busy. You, you, you put out a video every morning, very early. Uh, but yeah, how is poor? I think this is my, this is my favorite question. Okay. How important is reading uh, in regards to success? Reading is, so here to me in a nutshell, we talked about the mentor thing being extremely important. And while not everybody's got a super awesome person right at their you know, fingertips or accessible, I mean, that, what you have before you with this guy you were talking about is, is wonderful. And very few people necessarily have that opportunity. So for those that don't, books are how you get mentors. It's an easy way to find uh, some of the most successful people, again, Look to what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Whatever your goal is, 
Find somebody that's demonstrated that and read about them. Learn about them. What did they do? What were they thinking? What was going on in their mind? Because you'll find right. in all of these people's cases, they were dirt poor too. You know what I mean? Like right. all these people started from most, there's some silver spoon people, but most people started with nothing, especially the entrepreneurs. And that's the beauty of it. It's that hunger. It's actually that hunger that really keeps you going and striving. So books right. are the best way to get all sorts of different mentors that you would never you know, Harvey Weinstein, I don't know, he's a bad name. Uh, it was, uh, Bill Gates or whatever. Yeah. Any of these guys aren't going to let you sit and have lunch with them most likely. But you can read their right. story and learn all about them. So it's, uh, it's good. Or, uh, that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. I'm very thankful for my mentor. I mean, it's hard to get time with him. But, you know, the, sometimes he sets aside 15 minutes for me, like for either FaceTime or a phone conversation. And, man, that's so, that's so cool. And I write questions. Yeah. Do you have questions all laid out before you go? And I have like, the questions. All, I'm like, he, like, hey, how are you, bud? How you doing? I'm like, uh, I'm doing good, Jeff. Just uh, yeah. let's get to the questions because I don't. Yeah. Time <laughs> is money, minutes. right? Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, he only, I know he's only going to give me 15 minutes or 30 minutes. I want to get into the questions right. and we'll, we'll say how how are you through text or whatever it is. Yeah. But <laughs> nice, you know. But uh, man, th thank you so much, Dan, yeah, for you're this. You're very so. welcome. You're very welcome. I appreciate the opportunity. I wish everyone all the success you deserve and you do deserve it right. everyone does and it's a great thing thank you sir. thank you um what are, what do you got going on today you, you uh, went live? yeah today is uh it's uh well i've been off work so that's great so i'm gonna try to okay. do a couple youtube videos i actually didn't do i usually record them at night and then release them in the morning when i wake up for work so that's kind of why they always go out at the same time i just hit publish but um I didn't actually do one yesterday. I was just celebrating. Yesterday was a good day. It was obviously Thanksgiving, yeah. and uh, I was uh, watching a couple football games, and uh, <laughs> might have had a couple a uh, couple beers maybe, and uh, okay. yeah, wasn't going to be recording any YouTubes. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to catch that. I'll probably put this one out too. I'm looking forward to seeing what my audience thinks about this. Um, I'm probably right. slanted the other direction as far as um, my audience makeup, and then they range in right. age too. I, I'm kind of... Uh, really got people in their teens all the way up into their 60s. I mean, so it's a it's a pretty wide audience and and probably about 25 percent men. So it's it, which that's been growing by the way. That's really awesome. I'm glad to see it is. So anyway, oh hey, you're doing great. I'm watching you every step of the way, and I kind of did the same thing yesterday. I didn't do anything. I just kind of used it to yeah. spend the time and regroup and start to, today. You know, on a to work. Better level. Yeah. <laughs> you are on live. I just went live now. Cool. Cool. On Instagram, you want to say anything to a lot of these 20 year olds? Any last little tip? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. And it was a big point we hit home, and I hope they can hear me. Have a mentor. And if you don't, if you don't know someone personally in your life, then find a book of someone that's done exactly what it is that you're trying to accomplish and start learning that now. The sooner you start learning that, the sooner you're going to have the success that you're looking for. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you, you so it. much for your time. And I'll let you go. Hopefully we can, uh, let me just get off a of live here. Got a personal question to ask you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you got it, man. All right. And now I did this, I won't put it. Um, but um, So I definitely want to... Um, spend an hour with you or so, or if you can, sometime, whenever you have time. And I'm willing to pay you. Like, I'll pay you whatever, 100 uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just want to ask you questions on the tags you're using, different things like that, any tips that you can help me with, you know. And I, and I don't care. I'll, I'll send you no, uh, a quick... It, it, yeah, Whatever. definitely. Uh, but where I want you to start first is this yeah. guy named Steve. I want to say it's Stephen Ives, uh, I V E S, kind of a chubby yeah. white guy, blondish hair. He actually mm -hmm. goes to YouTube and talks to a lot of their developers and stuff. So he's constantly doing videos, and he's also got many, 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 many different channels, and he opens channels up as a business, and so right. he knows uh, how it works too. There is a thing called TubeBuddy. It's an add-on for Chrome. I hope they have it for Safari. I'm not sure. Um, but I heard Roberto Blake talk about it. Yeah, TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy is a lifesaver. Um, it will allow you all the tags. It allows you to save up to three groups of tags. Just that right there in and of itself has saved me hours. Right. Um, but it allows you to basically save out a lot of these things. There's... Uh, upload templates that you have already within YouTube. So again, it's making use of these things, but tags is key. Um, and then consistency. You you don't do a lot of videos, it seems, which is good, 
but um, but it's that consistency. So maybe make it every Monday you've got one out, right? And that's just people know that Monday's the day. But try to be consistent about the day that you're going to put out. If, if you're going to do one a week, then do it, you know. Because yeah, I started only two months ago, and every Sunday I go live and I put that. And I do try to do other, like, five, eight-minute videos. How would you get – you seem – are your views – like you seem like you have a lot of people subscribed, but it doesn't seem like you have as many views to sort of. Yeah. So the the thing was, all these views that I got, I mean, all these uh, subscribers. Yeah. It's just me. Hey, Sally. Hey, mom. Yeah. Hey, coworker. Hey, I need your help. Right. And right. you know, everybody has been supportive with that, which helped me rank um, the first one when right. you search game. When you before I wouldn't even come out. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And so that mm-hmm. here's here's one of the secrets. And I just learned this. I don't know if you've ever you've seen me talk about Anya's or if you've watched any of her shows, but um, she's got I think seven thousand subscribers. So just to kind of put things in perspective for you, I hit a hundred back in March of this year. So it took me three years to get to that point. Now I was doing just video for a while. I was doing exactly like you, where it was just hitting people up, but I was just not real yeah. real aggressive about it. But it wasn't really growing all on its own. Once I broke 100, that changed, and literally you get a bump roughly equivalent to about 10 times what you were getting before. So maybe if you were averaging, I don't know, maybe five a month, now you're going to get 50 a month or, right. or, or a little more. Um, and then what happens when you hit 1,000 is the same thing. So Anya's one year ago with her almost, well, 7,300 7, or whatever, I think she's at roughly right now, she was yeah. exactly where I am right now one year ago. So the growth factor kicks in even more significant when you hit a thousand. I'm sure there's another marker. So it's one of those things, kind of like we were talking about uh, on the video. Just be consistent, be persistent, keep pushing towards it, and it actually starts to actually build itself, and and it just starts to take off. But yeah, two yeah. buddies, huge. That Daryl Daryl Lives, that's his name, Daryl Lives. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know who you're talking. About. Yeah, mm-hmm. that guy rocks. Um, but yeah, yeah, we can talk more, and certainly as I keep growing, it just helps and. I'm constantly trying to figure out new things to do too, and I told my wife, I'm like, babe, what the? F-? I'm sorry for my language. No, what, like, the, what fuck? the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck is this guy? Look at this guy. Look, I'm like, and I'm so like real with him. I'm like, look, this is who I'm gonna interview. Like, and she's like, oh my, no, yeah, no, I get it, I get it. But like, I'm like, babe, like, I two, three weeks ago he was at six fifty. Today he's at seven, almost seven twenty. Like, this is a big deal, you know. It's, and to have this, you know, it's so valuable to me. 33 minutes, look, 33 minutes, and yeah, trust yeah. me, this means a lot to me. I appreciate it. That's good. I'm glad, I'm glad, and I'm glad I'm able to be, <laughs> be sort of a mentor in this regard. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, uh, just stay consistent with it and keep at it. Man, literally March, dude, that was when I broke 100. Right. Uh, and I've, I've probably averaged about, you know, it's usually 108, 110, 100, and it's like right around there. It seems like every month is what I'm typically averaging. I did a couple yeah. extra videos with Anya's, which helps, by the way. So I'm going to release this on my channel, and I'll link your channel. Um, cool. Uh, and, yeah, so we'll at least try to get you to get some traffic back to you and stuff. Um, good videos yeah. for, obviously, really success. So, yeah. But uh, literally with Anya's, um, I get a bump every time we do videos. We were doing one a month, and then we had to move timelines up because of holidays and stuff. So it worked out to where we got together three every three weeks twice now. And I'm uh, right. I'm getting a nice little bump from that too, so it helps. It's all it's just a community, man. It's it's good stuff. So I'll let you go and let's take a selfie. Cool, nice. <laughs> <laughs> there we all go. Right. All right, I love oh. it.